So good morning Lana, welcome to today's lesson. And as I promised you in our previous lesson, we are now going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of both organic and inorganic manures. And we're going to straight, uh, start straight. What you call about uh, what you call organic manures are those that we make natural uh, back at home. They are not made uh, using chemicals, they are made by the materials that we use at home. So the four, the, the four I gave you at the beginning of this topic, that is the green manure, farmyard manure, the compost manure and organic mulches. One will see the advantages once we use them in the soil. Number one, we are not going to realize that they remain in the soil for a long time. Remain. in the soil for a long time. What we are just saying is that they are not easily leached. They are not easily leached. Leached. What is this leaching, Lana? Leaching is the downward movement of uh, uh, nutrients into the soil. So there are those nutrients when you place the soil, they move downwards. That is what we call leaching. But for these natural manures, they remain in the soil for a long time. Meaning that they can continue supporting plants for a longer time as compared to inorganic fertilizers. Number two, they improve the water holding capacity of soil. They improve, improve the water holding capacity of soil. Reason being that they bind soil particles together. These manures bind soil particles together. And therefore, it means what we mean by water holding capacity the, the, the ability of soil to remain with water for a longer time. You have seen most of times, uh, sand soil is not is not used to, 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 to hold water. So once it rains and the soil is sand soil, you see that the water has disappeared just in a few minutes. Because the soil particles in, uh, in sand soil are far apart. They are not bound together. That means that soil, uh, I mean, uh, uh, sand soil is, is loose, meaning it doesn't contain uh, 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 fertilizer, it doesn't, doesn't contain fertility, meaning that's why it's, 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 it's loose. So the soil particles are far apart, meaning that the air spaces are so bigger, and so any water that comes there will just be able to uh, uh, drain very fast. So we are saying that it improves water, uh, water holding capacity in the soil. Number three, they improve the structure of the soil. Improve, improve the structure, the structure of the soil. In what I've just said, binding soil particles together. They are cheap and easy to make. They are easy, they are cheap, sorry. They are cheap and easy to make. They are easy and cheap to make. So once you're using, uh, once you're using uh, this, uh, what we call um, uh, organic fertilizers, it means that we are not buying anything. We are not buying anything. We are just collecting the manures that they are at home. We are just using uh, the cow dung urine and all that. We are using the kitchen refuse, like in the case of uh, the, the compost pit. Kitchen refuse left to us. There's nothing we are going to buy to make those fertilizers. That is what makes it very easy to make and also cheap in terms of buying. Number five, they add humus into the soil. They add humus into the soil meaning that they improve the soil fertility. And lastly, they do not pollute the environment. Number six, they do not pollute the environment. So this one you can say they are environment friendly. Once you use even uh, uh, the small chambers at home, the kitchen gardens, you can still continue staying there and no effect from the, the, those manures uh, as for the case of uh, those uh, uh, inorganic fertilizers. 
So you want to see the disadvantages. Disadvantages of organic, that is natural, natural manure. They have the advantage. Here's another that has the advantages. Number one, you see that they they can, they are bulky. They are bulky. What do you mean by bulky planner? They don't have a regular shed that can be able to park in the sizable uh, uh, units like of 2 kg, 5 kg and the rest. So when you talk about being bulky, it means that they are not easy, not easy to park and transport. Unlike in, uh, in organic fertilizers where you find that they are packed in uh, 5 kgs, 20 kgs and so on, you can be able to load maybe in, in a lorry and carry it away. You can also buy 2 kgs, 1 kg and the rest. But these ones are bulky to, to, to carry. Number two, see they take longer time. They take longer time to release nutrients. They take a longer time to release nutrients. Look at the case of uh, the case of green manure, which is taking three to four weeks in the chamber to be able to release nutrients. Take for example the compost manure. You have to wait for until a whole month for it to be able to produce nutrients. So in this case, we are saying that these ones are, will take longer for them to be able to release nutrients. Not in the case of uh, um, you know organic fertilizers, where you, once you apply they release nutrients directly to the soil. Number three, it takes time to make organic manures. It takes time, time to make organic manures. So it's time consuming. The time that it takes, you'll find that if a farmer uses in organic fertilizers, they are able to, 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 to reap within a very short period of time. Some may contain seeds of weeds and other plants. They can transmit, they can transmit weeds. So they encourage a uh, growth of weeds. Like for example, I talked to you an example of uh, the cow dam. If you take the cow dam into a chamber and it rains, wait for a few, a few uh, days, you'll see that many crops, many weeds will be growing from that area where we had that cow dam. Meaning that this animal, one they are eating, the seeds do not die. They still survive even in the stomach. So once they, they spread them, once they remove them through the feces, I mean the cutter, you realize that they are going to be kept there until you take that manure into the, in the chamber and you'll be transmitting a lot of ways, different ways into, into, into your uh, chamber. Then lastly, they do not add specific nutrients to the soil. They do not add specific nutrients into the soil. You know what I told you, Lana? When you are preparing compost manure, or even green manure, after getting the manure, we don't know exactly what nutrients we are placing in the soil. We have just seen in the case of uh, uh, the inorganic fertilizers, like what we call the straight fertilizers. Once you apply a straight fertilizer, that is nitrogenous in nature. You know exactly you are fixing nitrogen in that particular soil. But in this case, if you apply matches, organic matches, you don't know exactly what type of nutrient you apply to that soil. So you don't know the specific nutrient that is found contained in those uh, uh, manures. So that is the, one of the advantages that you can never know that this uh, nitrogen fertilizer I'm, I'm applying here, or this a uh, nitrogen, maybe uh, potassium, we are applying here because these ones are just locally made. They do not have specific nutrients that they are going to transmit into the soil. Let's now move to uh, advantages of inorganic fertilizers. Advantages of inorganic fertilizers.
advanced use of inorganic fertilizers. So these are fertilizers that we talked about in, an, uh, in our last lesson, that these are the straight fertilizers and the compound fertilizers. What is the advantage? Number one, you realize that uh, they can be transported easily, meaning that they are not bulky. They are not bulky. They can be transported. Transported and packaged with ease. Packaged with ease. What does that mean, Lana? The inorganic fertilizers can be packed in 2 kg, 1 kg, 50 kg, and 100 kg bags without a lot of problems. But now I want to assume that you have cowed up there, you want to pack into 100 kg. This is not possible. And, and this one, we are saying that they are not bulky. They can be able to be transported easily. They use nutrients very fast as they, they are soluble in, in soil water. Release, release nutrients very fast as they, they are soluble in soil water. Once there is water, they can dissolve in that water and release nutrients immediately. So that's what we are saying. Number three, they provide specific nutrients to crops. They provide, provide specific, specific nutrients to crops. Once you apply the, the, the CAN, you know exactly you have added nitrogen in soil. So you don't need to uh, have a lot of energy to know what exactly specific nutrient you have uh, put in the soil. Well, once you apply calcium ammonium nitrate, you know that's a nitrogen fertilizer. And so the specific nutrient there is nitrogen. Then they are easy to apply. Easy to apply. You can apply in, in using a spoon even. Even in your, your hand. So you just pick two spoons, place in each one of the, of the crops. But look at the cow dung or even compost manure. It's not easy to apply them. How will you apply them? Maybe you have a, a, a spade that you're going to scoop a spade and place where we have the crops. But this one you can easily apply them, even without, without uh, any edit. So the next one is going to be number five. And number five, we are saying they lead to the happening of fruits. They are those ones that lead to ripening of ripening of fruits. Remember, we talked about the nutrients, the macronutrients, sulfur, sulfur and the, 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 the nitrogen, and so, so forth and so on. Like sulfur will help uh, plants to be able to ripe. So each specific nutrient is for a specific uh, function so in, a, in a plant. So you realize that in, the, in, in, a, in on a garden manure you don't have that. You don't have that. But this one can be to like any of those. And lastly, the lead twice and quality problems. Lead highs highs and quality quality produce. The produce that we get from here because uh, of the specific uh, nutrients, they have high quality and a lot of yields at the same time. Disadvantages Disadvantages of inorganic fertilizers. What are the disadvantages of this? Number one, they have a scorching effect. They can scorch plants once used in excess. Once used in excess. If you use excess, if you use excess of these fertilizers, they are going to burn the crops. You have seen. If a fertilizer was used to make, uh, for, was meant to, to 
be done for, for a top dressing like the CN. Once it falls on leaves, those leaves are going to dry. Meaning mm -hmm. that they are what we call a, a, a scorching effect. You place it there also, you are going to, eat, uh, to, 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 to hear some, to feel some, some burning coming from uh, the, the fertilizers. Number two, once it's in excess, once it's in excess, they pollute. They pollute the environment. No matter the ones that, they're the ones that are carried by rainwater into water bodies. Remember when we were talking about uh, water pollution, we talked about these things. So once you see this, they are likely to cause uh, 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 soil pollution or even water pollution and also air pollution. Number three, uh, they are very expensive to buy. Very expensive to buy. You can get a kilo at around 40 shillings and for, for that small scale farmer, this is not easy for them to acquire. So they are very expensive in terms of uh, buying. They do not remain in the soil for a long time, therefore can only be used once. Can only be used, be used once since they do not remain in the soil for a long time. Unlike in organic manures. I'm saying organic manures remain in the soil for a long time. So they can be used once and again. You can use them this season. And the next season you still find that they are still there and you can still, the plants can still be with them. But these ones you apply once, they, 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 are, they are finished and you cannot find them anywhere else. They do not improve the physical properties of soil. They do not improve the physical properties of soil. That is number five. They do not Improve the physical properties of soil. We are talking about the water holding capacity as a physical uh, property of soil, the water retention. We are talking about drainage and capillarity. These inorganic fertilizers do not improve that, so they do not improve the, uh, the physical properties of soil. And then, lastly, learner. Some are corrosive and bad ants to apply it using their hands. Some are corrosive corrosive meaning that they can burn they are corrosive and can burn ants can burn ants can burn ants if applied using bare hands. So you need to have maybe gloves to be able to apply these kinds of fertilizers. So we're saying, once you apply them using bare hands, they can easily burn you. So fertilizers are chemicals learner. I want you to take precautions. If you have some that you are using at home, maybe you are applying at your small garden there, your kitchen garden. Not that you're not supposed to use Bare hands to be able to apply them, ensure that you use a spoon to be able to scoop and place exactly where you want to place in terms of applying. So don't use your bare hands because they are chemicals and they can easily burn uh, your hands and also have a, a, an adverse effect into your body. So now that we've come to the end of this chapter, soil fertility it was a bit longer. But I like the way that uh, we've done it slowly, but we have captured every bit of uh, this chapter. And we are going to see how these questions come. I'm going to give you a lot of questions from this area, from different setters, and you see how questions are. So that any time you're given a question like this, Lana, you can be able to smile and answer it well.
So I want to give you some work on that particular topic. And I want you to, to open your books that is on now. Uh, we have this uh, primary science. Numalana primary science our first book. Very, very important that we take our work from there. And any other book apart from this becomes a reference book or even uh, uh, a revision material. So I want you to look at um, page 104. Page 104. We are talking about the primary, primary science, book 7. There are questions there. We have revision exercise 1 running from number 1 to 10, and then revision exercise 2 running from number 1 also to 10. So revision exercise 1, that is going to cover 1 to 10 questions, and then revision exercise 2, going on to run from number 1 to 10. I expect all of you, learners, listen and listen well. I expect all of you to do this work and do it well. I'm giving you today, and by Friday morning, everybody has posted the work for marking. This is a very serious unit that comes in KCP, and if you joke about it, then learners, you are going to meet a lot of questions. It's until I mark this work that I can be satisfied that you learners will have understood. And after that, I'm also going to give you other questions from books and also from test papers so that you see exactly where we are at this point. So until next time, Lana, I want to wish you well. I don't want to talk about the next chapter because we have so many chapters that we have not handled. So I just choose which one to handle first before I come to the rest. So until next time, Lana, I want to wish you well. And may God continue blessing you as the purpose to do all that you are giving and doing it well. So that if you are writing your answers, you write them so well so that I can be able to see and mark for you. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.